we've got 11 aluminum bolts and two steel bolts. The two steel bolts go right here and here. This diff is totally loose right now. I don't want it to fall off. Yep, don't lose that spring. Now we're going to measure the factory backlash of the front diff, and we're going to do that from the center diff here. And the way we're going to do it um, is this gear is attached rigidly up through here on a shaft to a pinion gear which drives the front differential. So, when we spin this gear, we're measuring the backlash up in the front. So if you just hold the front stub axle and you rotate this a little bit, you'll feel a little knock in your right hand through that stub axle. That's the, the backlash we're trying to measure. So we want to know the free play between this shaft and the differential up here. We don't want to measure the free play between this gear and that gear, which you can see is usually much less. Right. So if you hold this one constant and you wiggle this one, you'll feel how much play there is. And then if you hold this and the front diff, you'll feel a different amount. Now you'll also find, even if you're holding the front axle, because it's an open diff in the front, if you spin this, you can actually hold the front axle and everything will spin. So you can't do a, a whole lot of force here or else you're going to be spinning the front axle. So you can get around that um, if you have a second person by having the second person hold both of the front axles at the same time. And now that now I have a lot more force that I can put in before it starts moving. But you should be able to do it either way. You just have to use a lot of finesse. Now to actually perform the measurement, you have to get your dial indicator set up so that it's just on the tip of one of these teeth. And you want it to be making good contact and about as flat as you can get to it. Um, you don't want to be measuring it like this. You want the angle to be lined up with the direction that the teeth are moving. And then you want to feel the play and at one end of the play, you need to zero out the gauge. So here, go from there to there. Now I'm on one end, and I'm going to turn the gauge until I'm reading zero. Now I can go back and forth. And wherever it reads, that's your backlash. So I'm reading, now I've moved it a little bit, the gauge is not exactly zeroed. I'm reading about 25 thousandths of backlash. On these OEM diffs, I've seen anywhere from 10 to 52 thousandths. When we put this back together, we're going to be targeting in the 10 to 15 range. That's going to be really nice and tight without adding any resistance. Um, and that's going to give us the maximum contact patch on the teeth of the gears. We're going to remove this front stub axle. Um, there's two ways to do this, easy and the hard way. The hard way is to get a pry bar in from either side and pry outwards against the casing. Um, there's a high likelihood you'll damage the seal in there. Um, we, I am going to include the seal with the diff so you'll be able to replace it. Now the easy way is to use a slide hammer. Uh, you can get this stuff from O'Reilly's or any other auto parts store. Um, they're free. You can rent them. I'll post the part numbers, at least for the O'Reilly ones, in the video here. You just want to attach two of your bolts. Snug these up. Attach your slide hammer. So we 
easy. Easy peasy. Before we pull the diff completely out, we want to make sure that we protect this sealing surface. Okay. Alright, now be very careful to support the weight and stick your fingers in the middle. It is a little bit heavy, so... That's it, we're done. Your front differential is very fragile. It's important that it makes it to us in one piece without any damage. Uh, so you have bearings on both sides. Those need to be protected well, especially the cages that hold the actual rollers or the balls in. Then you've got your ring gear here. If you get any nicks or anything in your ring gear, it's gonna cause a wear pattern on the pinion gear um, on every tooth of it. So you definitely need to protect this really, really well. Um, so. There's three layers of protection. The first, we're just going to stop any fluids from getting in or out of it. Um, you're going to just put this in a garbage bag or a, a grocery bag or something like that where it can be mostly all sealed up. That way if it's leaking anything, it doesn't make it through the box and then get rejected by the postal service or whoever. And then the next thing we need to do is use something to, to kill the sharp edges. So I use like this foam stuff. You can use like moving paper. Um, or any really any kind of foam or something that's a little more rigid, not bubble wrap. Um, we're doing this specifically to protect the bubble wrap because sharp edges will cut right through bubble wrap. I'm just gonna wrap this up. And I'm gonna fold these over and really protect them. Put some tape to hold it in place. Can't have too much protection for these. And then your last step is going to be bubble wrap. Any kind is fine. Make sure you use a lot of it. See, it's already popping stuff, right? That means it's still sharp. You at least get three or four layers of bubble wrap around this. These are heavy. And it's easy for them to point load the bubble wrap and break it. So it's really important to get multiple, multiple layers. So easy tests to do. And don't do this on a really hard surface, but you should be able to drop it from any corner. And you shouldn't feel, you shouldn't hear anything. You shouldn't hear any phone thuds or Anything like that should just bounce. That's how you know you've done it right. And we go to box this up. If your box is bigger, make sure that it can't bounce around in there because that's what's going to cause bubble wrap to break. So stuff the box with whatever you've got. Make sure that it can't move.
Tape the crap out of it. These diffs are irreplaceable, so you do not want this to be damaged. 